But this forecast once again points out that we have been slow to return to growth in the state and there are very serious issues with the overall jobs picture in Minnesota. Nobody can balance this budget through cuts alone. The governor has proven that by not recommending right. a budget that balances with cuts alone. The Senate is absolutely willing to try to do that if the governor would recommend something that does it. We think it's important that the governor return to the negotiating table on the bonding bill. Apparently he's still at his 725 number roughly or 735. If you add the 110 million in new spending he wants, that means you gotta take 500 million out of the bill that the House and the Senate passed. If he would simply tell us what that was, we could proceed very orderly there. And we simply don't understand why you would want to drag out a bonding bill that, that uh, the state economist said should be passed sooner or later. This really comes down to the governor doing his job and, uh, and working with the legislature. It's going to be very important in the coming weeks to have as much transparency in this as possible. The he said, she said that's been happening around the two major issues that we've been trying to address uh, in the first few weeks should end. No more backroom deals, no more closed doors. Uh, Minnesotans deserve to be at the table to see what's going on. And on GAMC, he's now accomplished hiding the fact that his short-term budget problem is worse if he had signed that bill. Working Minnesotans are going to lose their health care out of the governor's proposal. And kicking people off of their health care when they are working, when they're paying their premiums, is not a long-term solution. The legacy he leaves is Early in his term, there was a $1 billion structural problem. He's going to leave office with a $5 billion structural problem. Is Minnesota better off as Tim Plenty leaves office? And the answer is a resounding no.